Hey, this is Ashley and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic and I am here for some Festa celebrations and I'm going to be ranking my favorite BTS albums in order from lowest to highest. And yeah, I just want to start out by saying first off that I absolutely love BTS's albums and there are very few skips that I have through their entire discography. So even though I am ranking some of these all the way at the bottom, chances are I still absolutely love the songs and the tracks but I'm ranking them partially based off of the cohesiveness and how well I think the album comes together as a whole. So let me go ahead and let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So starting out at the very bottom of the list is going to be Too Cool For School, which is BTS's debut single album. And it was a great album. I mean, No More Dream and Kiel and Weird Bulletproof Part Two, great tracks do not get me wrong but when it comes to when i have to rank everything down unfortunately too cool for school just fell to the bottom we have bts's oh are you late Two, which is their first mini album this is their second release that they had and it is a great album don't get me wrong okay so it is not their strongest it isn't I can't even begin to say that it is, but there are some really, really great tracks that we get on this one. It has one of my favorite songs of all time, If I Rule the World, and also another fun song to enjoy, which is Coffee. So I mean, yes. So No was the title track, and it wasn't the most amazing song, but yeah, you put on No and I'm still going to enjoy myself. Dark and Wild, which is BTS's first full album. And yeah, there are some really great tracks on here like Let Me Know and 24-7 Heaven and Yogi Wa. But it also has my least favorite BTS song, which is Rain. And I know that there's a bunch of you guys out there that love the song. And I can definitely see why. But it's also the song I probably skip the most. Also, Cypher Part 3. Yeah. <laughs> School Love Affair, which is BTS's second mini album. And yes, this was a jam of an album. There were so many good tracks on here that it's really, it's hard to put it this low on the list, but when it comes in terms of cohesiveness, um, it just had to go at the bottom. But I mean, seriously, you have Tomorrow, like you have Jump, you have the Cypher Part 2, like you have some really, really great tracks on here and it's hard to not just love this album. The Most Beautiful Moments in Life Part 2 and it's hard. This is when it really starts getting really, really, really hard putting this album this low, but especially when it has one of my favorite BTS tracks of all time, Bapsay, one of my absolute favorite songs. The song just hits, the meaning, the beat, the everything. Babsay is my jam. Um, but it's just such a good album. You have Run, you have Butterfly, you have it. But overall, I just had to put it down a little bit lower. I mean, no. Yungi is never mind intro. The School Love Affair Special Edition. And you'd be like, why is it? Why am I separating it out? And that is because of two very very important songs <laughs> and that is Miss Wright and the Joy O remix the slow jam remix listen these are two of my favorite songs I absolutely adore them Miss Wright is just a super fun song and then the slow jam remix of I like it is is just amazing if you have never listened to that mix you should go check it out um but because of those it just kind of it made the album feel like it kind of just like work together just just that little bit better and I just love it the most beautiful moments in life young forever so this is the repack that actually grouped a bunch of the songs from the two mini albums together and then we also got the addition of fire and save me and save me is an amazing song fire is a lot of fun but save me is my jam when it comes to those two um but overall the way that the album was mixed together and then the addition of the remixes that we got it ended up being a really fun album to listen to because you get 
there's a lot of remixes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's Save Me is a jam. Wings, You Never Walk Alone. Um, so commonly just referred to as You Never Walk Alone. But it pretty much had all the songs from the Wings album with the addition of a few new songs, including The Queen, Spring Day, The Bop, Not Today, and also the full version of Outro Wings. And then we also got the actual track, A Supplementary Story, You Never Walk Alone, which is a brilliant song as well. The songs are just all really great and they tied in together really well. The only reason why it gets dropped down, because you obviously you haven't heard Wings on the list yet, but um, the reason why it actually goes down is just because the addition of those songs, it changes the flow of the album a little bit, so you don't get the, which I will speak on later, the same kind of flow that you get later on. So the flow changes, and this is the area where we start getting into, well, the flow and order of the album actually makes a difference. So. But it is some amazing songs that they added on, obviously, but it just, it just had to go down just because of the structure that ended up happening due to the fact that it is a repack. The most beautiful moment in life, part one. And now this one, you would think, oh, maybe they would be closer to part two, but Part one is brilliant, and let me tell you why. So part one did a really amazing job of the kinds of songs that were grouped together on this album really fit well tonally and really worked well together. So you have songs like I Need You and Hold Me Tight that are bringing them down and are much slower and relaxed. And yes, you do have dope in there. But you have also things have things like Converse High and the amazing, the amazing Isa. Yes. Moving on, Isa. It, it, it's an amazing song. Amazing. But tonally, everything really, for the most part, it fit together beautifully. And the structure of the album also worked really well because you have this slower, more casual, and then you peak with dope. And then it brings it back down. You, you still have um, Fun Boys, but then it starts to bring it back down and you go back into the same mood that you kind of started out the album with. And that rise and fall was really well done. Beautiful, beautiful. We have my jam, my love, Map of the Soul, Persona. Okay, so Map of the Soul, Persona is filled with a bunch of amazing songs. Listen, Nam June's intro, Persona, mm. It is art. It is pure art. Um, Boy With Love is a lot of fun. Home is my jam. Probably my favorite track on the album. But it, it's just, it's an album that is filled with six really great songs that seem to actually kind of fit and flow well to each other. We don't have any song that really stands out too much. Um, and they kind of just work together as a unit, which is great. Um, out of anything, Dionysus stands out a little bit much, but the fact that they have it positioned where it is, it ends up working with the album because you start with something that is much harder and then you finish with it. So it ends up working out really, really well for that album. And I do enjoy it very much. Like, Persona is my jam. The amazing Love Yourself Answer. And in general, I would want to say that it's like a repack, but it really isn't like a repack. It is much different than the other two repacks that they have. In yes, they do have songs from the previous two sections of the Love Yourself uh, series, but uh, the number of new songs that they added, it really makes it feel like it was half repack, half new album because in this we got all of the solos <laughs> that we hadn't had yet on the album so we got epiphany we got euphoria and then we also got the rap lines solos that hadn't been released for the series yet so we got those three so we essentially had five solo tracks that were ne that had never been released yet <laughs> And then we also had Idol and we had I'm Fine. So we really came out of this with 
seven tracks which is actually a lot that's like its own mini album in itself <laughs> so there were really a lot of things that were coming out in this so it feels a little bit different but the way that it was pieced together and it was then organized rather than just sticking the things that were from the her and then sticking things that came from tear into answer it was structured in such a way that it just made the the flow of the album just ended up working really really well um and i ended up really really enjoying answer listening to answer from start to finish feels really good like it feels like it works like it should be that way and that really does say something especially when it is kind of half repack in this album it was structured really well Wings. and i'm very tempted to put this in the top spot but i have a few reasons why it is not but none of them have to do with this particular album <laughs> so wings itself is a masterpiece um so some of the songs are not my absolute favorites but the way that this album is composed structured and linked from song to song is masterful so there's i've always wanted to make a video on this and maybe i will if you guys are interested in this but there are a lot of the musical, musically thematic things that tie one song to another song that then tie into the overarching story that they released, which really shook me to the core. So there's things that will tie from the way that the music is presented in certain members' songs and then that are completely different from Jin's track. And it's just musically, it's something that's really great to listen to. I love listening to Wings in great, like super high quality headphones with, um, with the actual CD because the audio that you get from the Wings album is amazing. It's, it's just really well done in, in ways that I haven't seen that happen to in any other way. Cause it's not just the structure of the placement of the songs but then how the songs link to each other and how it ties everything together and how those themes that are in one song reappear in another song but are changed to fit the other song's aesthetic it's just it's just a really well done album and if you do want me to talk about it I will go ahead and do that I've been meaning to do it for years but it's just it's it is a brilliant brilliantly put together album and now we have the final, my favorite album currently from BTS, which is Love Yourself Tear. If you couldn't figure that out, I mean, it was the only one that was left. But Tear is, to me, my favorite album. It is not quite as thematically linked together as the Wings album is, but it does contain some of my absolute favorite songs. Okay, so so I mentioned that Bapse was one of my favorite songs and it probably is, but there's a huge problem because Singularity I think might actually be my favorite track of all times. And Singularity is Tay's opener that was part of that album. Tear is one of my favorite tracks. Paradise is a hidden bop that just does not get the love that it deserves. I love how funky um, Pluto is. And Anpan Man is just so much fun. And while So What is typically not my style, after just one listen, I was all in on So What. And the fact that this album was able to convert me on so many of these songs and make me enjoy it so much, so consistently, like to the fact where I don't ever skip any of these tracks. These are all must listen to's. Um, the Truth Untold is an absolutely stunning ballad. It is a gorgeous ballad. It is. And I just, it is an amazing album. Absolutely amazing. 
And the fact that I love some of these songs so much and they are so high on my favorites list is probably what gives this album the edge over Wings as being my favorite album just because I love so many of these songs so much. <laughs> but ultimately, at the end of the day, it is my favorite. Thank you, Singularity. You have blessed me with things that... <sighs> <laughs> but yes those are my favorite bts albums in order and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time bye